Hello, hello, Ederson Oliver here. Today for the third interview with the DNN Summit presenters, I have uh, Mitchell Sellers, Joe Brickman, and Ben Schmidt. Ben, let's start with you. Can you introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your session? Yeah, so uh, my name is Ben. Um, I've spoken at a few conferences before. Um, so you might have seen me in some past ones. Um, if you're new, I'd uh, love to meet you and see you there. Um, I work for 10 Pound Gorilla. Uh, it's basically a design and front end web development firm. Um, and we focus a lot on uh, you know, good design, UX, copy, and marketing. Um, so my role there is designer and developer. Um, sometimes, you know, I'll just design, sometimes I'll just do development. Um, but a lot of times it's missing all that together. Uh, but my topic is going to be called headache CSS or headache.css, I guess I should say. Um, and I purposely made that sound like a framework like bootstrap.css or something like that. Um, but it's actually far from a framework. It's actually a way of thinking and a methodology to um, writing CSS that's easily maintainable and scalable. Um, a lot of times things start out and they're very you know, you have this idea in your head, you're like, this is going to be the best CSS I've ever had, and I'm going to be able to maintain it, it's going to be awesome. But as client changes start rolling in, things, you know, start just turning into a huge mess and maintaining it um, becomes a lot of work. So I'm just going to walk through different naming conventions, organizations, and things like that to uh, just help maintainability. Okay, so uh, Ben, on that note, when I was you know, getting ready for the conversation here. I said, oh, is this a new framework, yet a new framework? Let me let me put that on Google and let me search if this is a new framework. And then your session came on first uh, on Google search and I said, oh, okay. Uh, so he came up with that name, okay. Cool. I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> Glad to hear that. Good, okay, perfect. So let's let's jump to Mitchell. Mitchell, if you want to you know, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your session, yeah, I'm uh, Mitchell Sellers. I'm uh, here in the Des Moines, Iowa area. Um, been a speaker at a lot of the DNN events and was actually uh, uh, responsible for organizing the speakers. So uh, hopefully everything goes off and everybody's happy with all of the sessions that are available. Um, I will be uh, giving two talks uh, myself, um, one talking about uh, high traffic, high performance DNN and uh, how to make that happen. Um, it's an area that uh, is, is very deep, so it'll be a, a pretty busy session um, given the time slots that we have available, but uh, trying to share some tips and tricks around um, how to really make things work, um, no matter your traffic load. And then I'll also be uh, discussing uh, developing uh, MVC modules within DNN um, to help uh, those that are maybe working with some of the older frameworks or those new to DNN. Um, on how to get started with the MVC way of uh, doing module development. Got it. Okay. So I had something slightly different here in my my notes. I had you on performance. Mm -hmm. Is that in yet another one? The traffic high performance stuff is kind of all together. Um, it's a general overall performance um, session. Um, but we're using some examples of, of how to really kind of push the envelope a little bit. Um, so it was, you maybe had an earlier list where there were two separate performance sessions and we kind of merged stuff into one um, to fit uh, schedule. Joe, your turn. Uh, introduce yourself. Talk a little bit about your session. Uh, yes, I'm Joe Brinkman, uh, brand new to DNN. Uh, just learned about it in 2003, so um, it's, uh, uh, most people know who I am, and uh, for those that don't, uh, I've been around the community a while, uh, actually uh, head up the community program here at DNN Corp, um, as well as one of the co-founders of the company. Um, but uh, the session we're going to be talking about is a special session. We're going to be looking at uh, DNN 9. Uh, a little bit, uh, sort of what we are delivering in DNN 9, uh, and then looking forward to say, okay, where do we go now? You know, and, and sort of looking at the, the next year or so and, and sort of see where we want to take the platform and, and where we see DNN moving towards. 
Good. Okay, so now everybody introduce yourself already in, the, in your session. So keep thinking about what you're going to ask each other. I'm going to ask in a second about that. But coming back to you, Ben, uh, what is, you're talking about headaches, you know, CSS headaches. What is the one, one of the, the biggest headaches that you see when you are dealing with a DNN website, you know, with, with CSS and DNN? What is, what, is, what is one of the biggest headaches? Sure. Um, and it's not necessarily um, DNN specific. Um, you know, it applies to any website you're making. Um, but usually it starts out when, you know, you get the site done or you think you have it done and the client, you know, comes in, they want all these changes. Um, a lot of times there's issues. Um, if you haven't written CSS the right way, you know, they want to make this certain change and that change. Um, it's basically going to screw a lot of things up. Um, and basically that happens because you have too many things that are dependent on something else. Um, so a lot of what I'll be talking about is how to make um, basically what I would call components. Um, and that's basically just so you're focusing on small blocks at a time. So that way when changes do roll in, you're not having to rewrite, you know, hundreds of lines of code. It's just this little change here, boom, you're done. Everything else stays good. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, a lot of just, uh, Focusing on how to make small changes without affecting lots of other things on the site. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Mitchell, going back to you, coming back to you, I've interviewed, uh, we, I've discussed with, with Ryan, Ryan Moore. He will be also joining during the, I think uh, there, there's a joint session with you, him, and, and uh, Sanders as well, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Mark, it'll be Mark, Ryan, and myself, I believe, for the, the, ha I think it's hacked now what, I think is what, is yeah. what we have that. Involved. So my point is this, let's leave that conversation, you know, okay. to the, the one that I already had with Ryan, and let's focus your conversation right now with the session that you'll be the one doing by yourself. So you, you mentioned about MVC development, is that, is that correct? Yes. Got it. So, so what is it that you will be doing there? Because again, you, you have what you have uh, 50 minutes an hour. What are you going to, what are you planning to do within an hour about MVC development on DNN? So the big thing with only 50 minutes, you know, or 75 minutes, we have a lot of stuff to get through. So the session is primarily focused around providing um, the general overview of how an MVC module is structured, and then most specifically about some of the differences or common gotchas for those that are making the transition when maybe they were already an MVC developer that has been working with MVC outside of DNN. Um, so we kind of will make sure to hit the highlights of this is where the DNN MVC implementation is different. Here are some considerations. Um, those types of things are going to be the primary focus, um, utilizing, um, you know, some of the various uh, MVC templates and stuff that are available so that when people leave the session, they'll be able to kind of hit the ground running and uh, be able to work on their own stuff. Got it. So, so there will be stuff there for someone new to the in development coming from the MVC, you know, side of the world. And there will be uh, content there for people that already knows how to develop for DNN, and now they just want to come in and see, okay, what's MVC all about, correct? Yep, yep, exactly. So as part of that overview, um, you know, there's common components that are uh, relatable to that of the existing development model. Um, so for those that have experience with the web forms model of development, um, they'll be able to see some of the correlations just given the time frame. it's not necessarily focused on the transition from web forms to MVC, um, but there'll be a lot of very easy parallels and I'll do everything I can to call out as much as I can um, within that time slot. Got it. Okay. Okay. So Joe, let's talk a little bit here. You, your session is modernizing the DNN platform. So I guess that let's drill down a little bit into what modernize, modernizing really means. What does that entail? from your standpoint, you know? So I think one of the things that um, that often happens with technology is that people look at the way things have been done and they assume that that's the way you have to do things or that the way 
you have to move things forward. And I think what we're trying to do in DNN 9 and what we want to do moving forward is show people that there are that you can still use modern technologies, modern development approaches, uh, modern tooling um, for developing for DNN. You're not stuck because the platform was built on web forms 13 years ago. Doesn't mean that you have to use web forms to do platform development for DNN, right? And it's like us building in all of the hooks and all of the things um, to make it easier to do some of the more modern development techniques, um, but at the same time also showing that this was possible all along. The question I have for you about DNN9 specifically is that should people expect any any you know breakage when moving from DNN7, DNN8, DNN9? I mean, this, because my feeling is that there is a big revamp on the administration, but on the modernizing the administration of DNN9, but I don't think that there is any breakage there, is there? No, not really. Um, we, we've tried very hard with DNN9 uh, to be just about rebuilding the administrative tooling uh, and rebuilding the administrative experience. Uh, but, uh, you know, most users should be fairly seamless, painless upgrade. You know, there are some scenarios where maybe you needed a feature uh, that's no longer supported. Um, but most of those features were ones that you probably shouldn't have been using uh, to begin with. You know, a, a classic example, speaking of the, the CSS issues, um, you know, we had these features early on to do things like move module content left or move module content right within module settings, right? Um, and it's like, you probably shouldn't have been using those for the last 10 years. You probably should have been using CSS to do that stuff. Um, so things like that, we're removing from the, the framework. Um, you know, so is it possible someone was using that and it might break? Yeah, but realistically, it's not, it's not something where, oh my God, it's just not working. The site's not working and I have no way to recover. Got it. Okay. So, yeah. Perfect. Okay, going back to you, Ben. Uh, who, who's the audience? I mean, it seems pretty obvious, but I'm going to ask anyway. Who's the audience of your session? And why are you well positioned to to address that particular topic? You know, the, the UI, the, the, the front end. Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah, so it's geared. Um, I, I think I have it labeled as beginner. Um, I'm not really going to be talking about how to write CSS. It's going to be more um, of a thought process behind it. Um, so things like uh, naming conventions, and specifically, I'm going to be talking about um, BEM-like naming conventions. Um, so I'll go into some pretty in-depth stuff on that. Um, but yeah, it's it's more for anyone that either just does CSS all day long, they dabble in it here and there. Um, so it's it's meant for a broad range of people, um, whether you're just starting or you know you're an expert. Um, now, what, what was your other question? The other question was, why are you well positioned to talk about that? You know. Sure. Um, so yeah, it's something I I do on a daily basis. Um, over the years, I've I've kind of learned what does work and what doesn't work. Um, <clears throat> and specifically, the past year or so, I've been trying to look into. Um, you know, what other people are doing on the web, how they're solving, you know, the problems of ma maintainability and scalability. Um, so basically, I'm, I'm kind of just taking everything I've, I've read and learned and kind of thought of myself and just applying it uh, to this presentation. Got it. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to open a little bit and see if anyone has any questions to each other. I mean, feel free. Let Anyone? One. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. Okay, okay. Joe, please. <laughs> so, so Ben, uh, a lot of the challenges that the designers have long had uh, um, is how to make sure that uh, they don't end up with a lot of orphan CSS, right? Sure. You, you build these massive style sheets and, you know, it starts out as really applicable for a page. So, like, how do you 
find that CSS that's no longer being used on your site, given that sites may span, you know, dozens or hundreds of pages. Sure. Um, so yeah, it, part of a lot of what I'll be talking about is, is how to name things. Um, and it, it sounds really um, contradictory when I say this, but um, you want something that's clear and what it, you know, what that name is, but also vague that it can be applied elsewhere. Um, so something, for example, you know, say you have a class that's called dot for bitter links. Um, that, that's clear in that, you know, it's obvious where that CSS is being applied to. Um, but it doesn't allow for much reusability. Um, because basically, if you use that class anywhere outside of the footer, that doesn't really make sense. So a better name would be something like dot sublinks. Um, and that can be applied to, you know, the footer or somewhere else on the site. Um, so yeah, a lot of it is is um, thinking through, really thinking about your class names and what they stand for and what they mean. Um, you know, whether it's going to make sense to use it somewhere else on the site or not. Joe, does that help? Yeah, I think it, it helps a little bit. Got it. Okay. Okay. So what I'd like to do now is focus on on what is the one thing that each one of you would like people leaving your sessions to learn from? And you know, if there's one and only one thing that they learn, this is it. So Mitchell, let's start with you. What is the one thing that you like people to leave your session knowing about uh, DNN and MVC as well? Um, well, for the MVC session, um Really, I want them to understand how to be able to get the resources and implement what they're trying to implement with MVC um, and what the limitations are in terms of what they can or can't do. You, you mentioned resource. What, what are you referring to there? Is, are you referring about documentation? I mean, what are you talking about there? Basically, look. It's, it's a, all about understanding the differences between MVC and DNN MVC and understanding how the framework plays together. So that that's the key understanding because then all of the other resources are, are mostly applicable. You just have to know when things aren't. So all of the things that are typical hurdles for developers such as Razor syntax, et cetera, those are all any documentation you find anywhere is is going to help you um the difference is there's that subset of framework features right since we're running inside of dnn um, and it's helping people understand that dividing line because i think that's the hardest hurdle as i work with training and educating developers making the jump to mvc um that that's where i see the biggest struggle okay uh, joe i don't want to put you on spot right now but you know Mitchell is talking about you know documentation and MVC. Are there things being done regards to that on the on the documentation side of DNN? You know, there's a I know that there's an initiative there going on. Can you mention talk a little bit about that? Sure. So uh, for the past year, we've been working on a documentation project, um, and we we launched last spring uh, and have continued to. Uh, update the documentation. So you can go to dnnsoftware.com slash docs uh, and see the documentation that that we have available on that site. Uh, and we're really pulling documentation from a lot of different places, um, whether it's the old wiki, whether it's some old files that we had, Word documents, what have you, uh, as well as uh, having some new documentation created um, as part of the effort. I know we've We've contracted out uh, with Mitchell and with some other people uh, to write up documentation uh, as well as using our own internal resources. Um, so like MVC is one that I know uh, that we're in the, the final stages of getting that, uh, getting some MVC developer docs uh, actually created. Um, so okay. that's sort of where we're at. And that's an ongoing effort. That's not something that's got like a, a set end date. It's just, you know, documentation you're never finished with. But. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. So uh, going back to you, Ben, same question. What is the one thing that ideally everybody leaving your session 
will know about. I mean, they should have that mind after watching, after attending your session. Sure. Um, so the main thing I want them to take away is that uh, CSS makes things look pretty, uh, but it's inherently um, not pretty itself when you're looking at the code. Um, so what I want them to take away is that through the right thinking, they can make their code you know, look just as pretty as their site. Um, and, and kind of the main, I guess, practice I want them to um, start implementing is to think of things in smaller blocks rather than, um, you know, all one component. Um, so if you have, you know, three elements, you want each element to be able to exist on its own, even if the other two elements are taken away or changed. Okay, that's deep. That's deep. Okay, Joe, your turn. One thing, what is the one thing for your session? I really want people to come away with a sense of two, two, two ideas. One is that DNN continues to look at and evaluate new technology and incorporate it in the platform, use it in the platform. Uh, but two is that even where DNN hasn't incorporated something, uh, there are very, very few restrictions on what people can use. If you're a React guy, use React. If you like Angular, use Angular. If you're a Bootstrap 4 guy, write your themes with Bootstrap 4. Um, all of those things are possible, have been possible, uh, and it didn't really require us to do something in the platform to enable that. Uh, the things we do in the platform are um, things more like this is a scenario that we want to be a mainline use case and we're going to make it easier uh, or more prescriptive about exactly how to do that. But I think our community is, is has a bunch of really bright and intelligent people uh, and you can just look around and see all of the ways that they're using Gulp and Grunt and Less and SAS and CSS and JavaScript frameworks and backend frameworks to do all kinds of amazing things. And I want to, I want people to feel that sense of empowerment that they don't have to wait for us to be able to use the latest and greatest technology out there. Great, great. Okay. Okay. So I'm done with my, my questions here with my points. I would like to just open up again and see if there is anything else that any one of you would like to comment, would like to mention about your particular session. I'll just go around and ask and see if there is anything, Ben, anything else from your side? Uh, I think that's it for me. I was just wondering, Joe, um, is, is DNN 9 out yet? I mean, is it in the wild? It, it, it is in the wild. It is not uh, officially released. Uh, Adderson has been doing a, a bunch of great videos on on the uh, daily builds that we've been putting out. Uh, we will be releasing on December 9th or December 8th. Uh, sorry, so yeah, so three weeks from now. Um, so by the time you see this video, we'll be, we'll be just a couple of weeks away from the launch. Very cool. Good, good. So Mitchell, anything from your side? Um, from my, my biggest side is, um, you know, register if you haven't registered. Um, and after the sessions, give the speakers feedback. You know, one of the things too, for this event and future events, um, we do this because we're trying to help the community. So feedback to the organizers, feedback to the speakers um, is one of the biggest things that will help shape the direction of the events going forward. Got it. But on that note, is there a formal, a formal form something that will be printed out that will be handed out to to the attendees for for that to happen i do not know the i do not know for sure yet what we're going to have i i our next organizers meeting um there was supposed to be some infrastructure stuff in place um for a few things and that's not there so i don't want to say yes we're going to have this specific form or it's going to be done this way until i know for sure i know that I will make sure that we blog about it on the DNN Summit website and I'll make sure to get personal mentions out there as well because for me that's a it's a really important thing. My two cents, I mean go with something more formal, don't leave it open. So anyone could, you know, just drop by and send an email. I mean, 
have, have a form or something more formal that people can go and say, hey, I'm providing here my feedback and here it is, my two cents. Yep, I couldn't agree more. Joe, your, your turn. Anything else that you want to highlight, you want to mention before we go? Yeah, I think uh, I'm, I'm really grateful to all the, the community members who stepped up to help put BNN Summit together. Uh, I urge uh, community members, if you haven't been to one of these, uh, definitely make it a point to go this year, uh, whether it's DNN Summit or even the DNN uh, Connect uh, later uh, in the springtime over in Europe. Um, I think these there's a lot of value in these events, uh, in the networking, in the learning aspect, in just getting out and seeing what's going on with DNN. I think these are awesome events to, uh, to get that sort of information. Perfect. Okay, great. So very good talking to you, all of you guys. Thank you for your time and uh, see you guys again uh, in the next uh, chat, next interview. Okay, cheers. Bye.